Hello, today we interview a real estate startup. It's called Einsfrader Makler and Moritz, one of the founders, is sitting next to me. Hello. Um, Moritz, tell me something about yourself. How did you start uh, Einsfrader Makler and why? We kind of had the idea of starting um, one to eins, zwei, drei Makler um, two years ago, when uh, like there had been a rather drastic change in how agent fees would be paid and by mm. whom they would be paid. And so we kind of dug deeper into the market and understood that like the real estate market, mm. it's gigantic, it's enormously big, and there's actually very little transparency and almost nothing had been digitalized. Mm -hmm. And so understanding the process of marketing your property, we kind of looked at it as there's, in 8% of the cases, you have a seller, an agent, and a buyer. Mm -hmm. And the part between agent and buyer mm -hmm. is very much taken over by listing companies like mm -hmm. Scout 24 mm -hmm. However, the link between seller and agent, mm -hmm. there's nothing yet. So we kind of started taking over um, the online marketing for real estate agents. Started um, in June last year mm -hmm. and grew to now 3,000 companies mm -hmm. that we do the online marketing for. So basically what we do is we look for customers online, mm -hmm. forward them to uh, the, the correct real estate agent, the one that they would feel most comfortable mm -hmm. with, and get 20% of their fee once mm -hmm. a deal has been finalized. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it was really market, like seeing a market opportunity in a market that was really big, but where there was really no one. Uh, how did you contact the first, uh, the first agents? Well, we had, uh, this, one, this was really cold calls that we did. Mm -hmm. So um, it actually was me like calling up the first people mm -hmm. and finding out how they, feel, how they would feel about such a product. Mm -hmm. Because agents do know that more and more services are being looked up online, mm -hmm. yet they have a have really big problems like attracting customers online, right? So um, they really felt great about our service. Mm -hmm. And this was really then a, sort of a market proof for us. Mm -hmm. And with agents, we always had a very good, like mm -hmm. we always had really good conversion rates. And obviously offering a product that is first free and only performance based. And uh, did, did you get rejected by some agents and what did they say? And just well, of course, at the very beginning, um, we had been rejected by, um, especially like the bigger, like especially like the bigger premium houses. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that just took some months, really, until we like grew to the point where we are now, mm -hmm. for them to enter it. I mean, they don't want to. Obviously, like we just offer like additional customers, and um, you don't really want to leave out like. A, a chance like on getting your next revenues, which on average for a broker is like 10,000 euros. Mm -hmm. So there's some real money involved in this. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, they sort of changed their attitudes towards us as they saw that we grew. And when did you get into the real estate business and uh, with whom did you found the company? So I had always been, um, I had always been quite attracted to property, like coming from my, uh, really, like from my family and who is like more in development. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had pretty much taken jobs in all parts of like developing and marketing properties. So I had seen like quite a lot. I was actually even working as a like construction worker for some time. And um, so we, uh, it was me and um, three friends from like who, who I went to school with, mm -hmm. who sort of like all had complementary like skills and features, and um, yep, that's how we get it. Okay, cool. And what, what were the biggest challenges from the idea? Did you did you sit together and thought like, there's the thing that can be changed, and uh, what was this process? Or how long did it take to, to actually found the company? And well, it actually took quite a long time. So to really get like focused on the to find the right business model, to find something that had a market fit, that would take a while. So we had we did look at like various things you could do in this process. Actually, when we, when we like wanted to start, we had a whole different idea of what we wanted to do. So understanding what, how the market works, what would fit and what wouldn't, kind of was a challenge for us and definitely took some months. And how did you, how did you test it? Or what could you, what could you tell uh, the people out there uh, how they could uh, imagine 
they, they could um, develop their business model? Well, I guess I mean uh, aiming for very early market, very very early mm -hmm. market tests does definitely helps. Mm -hmm. You really don't have to have a product to uh, you don't have to have a product to uh, pitch it to someone, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what we did, we didn't really have anything developed, but we were pitching like the business model to agents and looking for a market fit like before mm -hmm. we even started. Mm -hmm. So this this definitely helps, right? Like get your like trying to get your first customers and ask how they feel about it. Mm. It's definitely a uh, way you can go. Yeah, that's good. Uh, what's so special about uh, the? Is it is it called proper proper tech? Uh, prop, prop tech. Prop tech uh, or the real estate uh, industry? I, I, there are some big ones like um, like Airbnb or different ones. Could, could, uh, w would you call yourself like the Airbnb for real estate agents? Or I mean, yeah, you could sort of say that we are like a so we are an open marketplace model, yeah. basically where you find your the best agents mm -hmm. in Germany. And um, so, and Airbnb is a marketplace too, mm -hmm. so you can compare the two in this respect. Mm -hmm. And generally about like prop tech, it's real estate is the very biggest, the single biggest sector in um, our economy. Mm -hmm. However, it is very, it is largely undigitalized. So only like few companies really um, uh, made proper advances to go into the market and have been successful doing so. Yeah. So there's really huge potential still on like how property is being traded, how it's being sold. There's still like a lot of there's a lot of potential in a market that is like incredibly big. Um, do you think that um, virtual reality or keyless entry in the in flats or buildings will change something in this area? I mean I guess like I'm not 100% sure, like I guess it will change in new builds, mm. but I mean like looking at Berlin for example, right, like 6% uh, of the property is uh, are like our beautiful Altbauten mm. and bringing in technology there like that you actually feel, I guess it will take a very long time and plus it's quite, exp quite, a, plus it's quite expensive in a market mm. where most people rent, there's li really, um, there's really little um, advantage to like putting like tech soft technology in it mm. and about virtual reality how that will change property is something I really don't know I believe that generally people will really like this is gonna be a huge thing mm. and I could picture that in like I don't know 30 to 40 years people will largely live in like virtual reality mm. right like mm. And how this will change living? I don't know. I've, I've really. Uh, Could you imagine that that uh, real estate agents would would put a 360 camera inside a inside a building that you can make like a virtual uh, view? Yeah. Well, this um, so basically, I don't really believe that the marketing or the like selling process of property will ever happen online, not at a significant extent mm -hmm. at least, because people have to feel the property. So no one ever would that I know, and I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't do it in any by any case. Um, would ever buy a property online? I mean, it is after all, it's going to be a huge investment. Mm. So like a, like even the sm smallest apartment doesn't come cheap. Mm. And buying something without really seeing it, without like feeling it. I mean, you have to go like I think like there's you know, buildings have a vibe that you have to experience. Sort of you have to go inside. You have to like f like just experience like. And you can't ever put this online, I think. Mm. So I think it'll help people. It'll, you know, it'll, it'll help people to like get a very good impression of what it is, and that it will definitely do. So it will definitely help in marketing property. But eventually, you always have to be there mm. before you buy it. Okay. And uh, so you started in Berlin. Why did you start the company in Berlin? And uh, did you live here and the other founders? Or, um? So I had been living here already for since a couple of years. And um, we start, so um, two of us actually moved here to Berlin. Mm -hmm. And the reason being that you have a very good environment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you have good developers, which is obviously key to any tech company, right? Mm -hmm. You need good people. Mm -hmm. And um, Berlin is a city that attracts developers, that attracts creative people. So um, that was a huge plus. Mm -hmm. and then obviously you have a um, you have a network of business angels of people in that environment and that kind of fosters growth mm. so it's i think i would it's a huge i mean it's a huge question where you actually found your company 
because like you can't make up for not finding the right people mm. if you start in, some, in a place that like doesn't foster that sort of environment. Mm. Um, okay, and uh, you could easily translate your platform into another into another language. Um, do you have any plans to scale in another or a nearby country or something? Yeah. So our business model like is very so it's very straightforward and easily relatively easily scalable. Mm -hmm. So um, we're gonna go to um, the Austria to Austria and Switzerland um, mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. and then plan on extending to um, other major European markets mid next year. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, this is after all like one advantage of having like digital, like having a digital platform, right? Mm. That is quite easily scalable and expandable. Yeah. And how did you find your people? Uh, how did you f f find them? Did you just write out like job postings or uh, what kind of developers do you have? And so yeah, that was a um, in the beginning we had focus on really finding the best people. So we interviewed a lot. Right? We started with one developer and um, really having someone you can rely on mm -hmm. and who writes good code is like like vitally important of really of vital mm -hmm. importance because it's really hard to pick up like if you start like working with freelancers or with whoever it becomes really hard to de like further develop on the code basis mm -hmm. and so that's something that we took huge uh, that we put huge focus on on finding the right people and initially i think we had like 20 to 30 interviews With people that would uh, like that we thought would fit, mm -hmm. and eventually it was just the uh, eventually it was one that we really had a good uh, good feeling with. And then did you start to, to, to pitch to investors, and um, did you find uh, anyone from the real estate business or industry? Or yeah, so we are backed by really the major players and mm -hmm. in both like uh, in both agencies. So we have the biggest premium agencies um, behind us mm -hmm. and um, obviously also like people from the real estate business and people that sort of like merge the two like real estate and tech and um, with our business model that is very like that is that is quite scalable we had it was relatively easy for us to find, to find money mm -hmm. and generally you have to say that you know to in prop tech you have people that are used to like other sums of money mm -hmm. so like 500 grand in tech will get you far away but in property like people that are used to dealing property it's one apartment mm. and they have 200 of them that mm. they do with, within a single project mm. so you know like the like there's a huge difference in how people perceive the money mm. between the two so mm. what is a lot to the tech industry isn't necessarily it doesn't feel so much yeah. to the people. Do you think it's easier because in, in Germany there are more um, Uh, real estate investors than tech investors mm -hmm. uh, compared to like Silicon Valley or whatever. And do you think it's easier to start in, in, in this business than as a purely tech company? I guess I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's more like, I mean, what we do is basically we provide a very like a very transparent service to people. Mm -hmm. And this makes it, it's really you can grasp that, right? It's very like it's people can understand the business model. Mm -hmm. People can see the platform and um, This is, I think, quite important when you want to attract investors mm -hmm. for them to understand what you really do. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the more you can relate to it, mm -hmm. and obviously like selling property is something that most people can relate to or just dealing with property, the easier it actually is to um, get the people on board. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely helped, yeah. And if you look back, what were the biggest challenges up to, up to now? From the um, beginning, when you sit down and find the business model. So one it was finding good people. Mm -hmm. um, I think eventually, what it comes down to when you have a proper business model is two things: it's money and people, right? Mm -hmm. So providing a environment that can grow, like because of the money, and then having great people will automatically really boost whatever you do. And these were, I think, largely the two factors we worried most about mm. and they definitely like were the most time consuming to find the two. Mm. Okay, um, so you're, you're quite in a, in, a, in a good position right now to talk about how is, how is, how is it to, 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 how is it to have a startup or to, to wake up in the morning, how is like your normal work day? 
but yeah, it has become like relatively normal, I guess. You know, mm. it's not really like it's it's not really like a year ago when it was all when you didn't know what like when you didn't have really that well of a planned day. Mm. So, so no. imagine that, like you wake up. What what was the first thing that you did? <laughs> Back then, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that, that was really largely the question that he would solve that very day. So, like, yeah. you know, there was so many things he would have to do, like from, I don't know, like meeting up with meeting up with agents that wanted, like that were sort of interested, mm -hmm. to like pitching to new people, preparing pitches, you mm -hmm. know, like that. It was like all really uncoordinated and really, or not. Yeah, but so there was like a lot of things, you know, you would um, have to do. And now it sort of becomes more and more just, uh, well, yeah, I, normal job, right? Mm. With very like with long hours obviously. Mm. But like very like very well planned mm. and thoroughly. And do you, do you enjoy it when, when you stay up late in the office or is there a point where you, where you think on the weather, obviously. <laughs> okay. not so much not so much right now. So <laughs> now that Berlin is you know like green and it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah it's like I really like what I do. Okay. And it's nice to work with people that you like and that you respect. Yeah. Great. So, what are you most grateful for for uh, right now? Could be anything, personal, business related. Um, well, I guess it would be business related. So it all went like it all went really well. Like mm -hmm. we had a like I mean, the platform existed in a, a year, and we've mm -hmm. grown to be like the big like the biggest um, broker platform in Europe. And so that I'm quite grateful for. That you know, there could have been like it could have gone like any other way, and there were like mm -hmm. sort of like many. Routes that would have that could have like led to a potentially not so good outcome, mm. but yeah, that I'm that I'm really grateful for, and you don't really sometimes you don't really know why that actually. So we had like I think a lot of like we also had a lot of good like faith and like it turned out to be mm -hmm. quite okay. So okay, so the last question is: um, Do you think there's a kind of pattern or formula uh, to become a successful startup entrepreneur? Well, that I would still have to prove, you know, before I could probably talk, before I could talk yeah. about this. So, um, no, I guess what, like what I heard and what I just had told you this is what someone told me the other day and what I find to be really true is um, it's just like doing things. Mm -hmm. So um, you never know whether it's going to be right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But basically what differentiates you is just like doing things. Mm. Then must like the outcome. You, you can't predict the outcome ever. No one can. Mm. And just like putting like as like doing as many like obviously focused things, right? And mm. like things that would correlate to your like or that that are on your strategic like path. Mm -hmm. But then doing them. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really like just doing things and like pushing things forward is probably what drives mm -hmm. drives you. Okay. What was the best book you ever read? Um, okay, so there's like the best book that I've ever read is um, called Master Margarita by Bulgakov that I really like. But it's some book that I really like to give to people is called Poor Economics. Mm -hmm. It's basically focuses on development economics and um, which I think we have a huge responsibility for. Like, I mean, there's many people, like billions of people, that really have a very very tough life, mm -hmm. don't know, not knowing where the next like food like the next meal will come from. And this really gives a huge insight and it's like just methodic like from methodology that's behind it and like mm. how it's set up like a great read. I can re recommend to anyone. Okay. D did you have a role model back then when you started or like a person who you're really interested in? Um no no not really actually. And today? Do you have a I mean like do you, do you mean a role model in the sense of I know the person and I like no, or just like, like generally uh, someone that I if, if I would be a race driver, I would, I would think that Michael Schumacher is a great person and he would be my role model to, to follow. Yeah, well then in this case I sort of uh, do like Elon Musk, I have mm -hmm. to say. Just like what obviously I think like what he achieved with like a, like with a broad range, within a broad, very broad range of things, right? Mm -hmm. Like from like founding like uh, PayPal to like shooting rockets like mm -hmm. in outer space is quite like a, and it also within the time the time frame that he achieved it, that I find really cool, okay. but that's obviously too far of a grasp like to be a proper role model, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> but Elon Musk is great. Um, and what was like the most important decision in, in, in your whole life that, that that forged you as the person you are today? Well, that's a big question too. Um, I couldn't probably. Uh, 
possibly pin it down to one uh, to one decision. Honestly, I think um, yeah, I don't. I ha actually can't answer this question. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, could you, could you give any advice to the people uh, to the people watching this? Yet yeah, maybe that um, what we've like what we've been experiencing is that like uh, generally it's all a lot easier than it seems once you start it. Mm -hmm. Like most people will ask, ask for help, most people will always help you. So I, we've had like great experiences with just really like asking like, like top-notch people for advice, for help. And the outcome, the outcome has always been great, right? Like so um, people always responded. Well, and then just doing things, you know? And like obviously you're at, when you want to do something, you're almost always quite insecure about it unless you've done it quite a lot of times. But just there's really nothing to be afraid of then. And even failing, I guess, isn't such a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Like, makes you, like, I guess in a lot of ways stronger. Yeah, so just go out there and like, do things and ask people. Well, so so just, just don't be afraid to fail? Don't be afraid to fail now. Don't be afraid to look stupid, because you won't. Mm -hmm. You won't, like, people always appreciate it when, you, when they have someone who like, wants to do things, who, uh, ask for help, they always appreciate it. So yeah, that would be yeah. Okay, Moritz, uh, thank you for the interview. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, you know what to do. Um, if you have any questions, leave it below uh, in the comments. And here you will find a link to einstwerdermakler.de to check out the website and what they do.